G'day, I'm Paul. Behind me is the new Isuzu D-Max. I reckon this is the most anticipated ute, pickup truck, backy, whatever you want to call it, launch of this year. The old one lacked so much technology, but Isuzu has addressed all of that. And today we want to figure out whether it's worth spending your hard-earned bucks on. This is the top specification D-Max X Terrain. Pretty cool name. It's priced at just under $63,000 and it competes with cars like the Mitsubishi Triton, Toyota Hilux, Ford Ranger, all of those cars in that segment. Today we're going to do a detailed review plus a little bit of off-roading. If you do want to skip ahead to other parts of this review, you can use the time codes up on the screen or if you're on YouTube, just scroll down and use the chapters below. And if you haven't done so already, hit subscribe and press the bell icon. That thing will tell you every single time we publish a new video. Okay, before we go any further, Scroll down in the comments and let me know, do you like the design? Styling is entirely subjective, but to me, I reckon this thing looks fantastic, especially in this sunburnt orange color. Now, a few people have pointed out here that this looks a little bit strange. It's like it's got a double grill and then you've got the Isuzu up the top there instead of here. So, I don't know, let me know what your thoughts are on that. So you've got eight colors to choose from and all but the base white is an additional 500 bucks. And if we jump down here a little bit further, you'll see you have these black highlights. They're like a sort of piano black finish and then it's offset with a different color. So you, you really see the difference there between the body colors that you can get this in. And there's a really diverse range of cool colors to choose from. It's not just a basic boring palette. And over here, buy LED headlights with LED daytime running lights. You've got your fog lights down here and also the indicator Cater. Around the side here, 18 inch alloy wheels. Now, a few people have pointed out that they don't love the design of these. Isuzu has listened to that feedback and they're offering additional wheels as accessories, so you don't have to go with this design. I personally like it, I think it looks pretty cool. It's kind of like an aero cover. Reminds me of my VP Commodore. But yeah, it's, it's a pretty cool looking setup. And then you've got your highway terrain tires, big bit of clearance there, and also these flared wheel arches to make sure everyone knows that you're driving an off-road vehicle. Over on our wing mirrors, you have the indicator sleekly built into there. Some side steps. The creek when I stand on them. I think I've been eating too much food during lockdown. Um, you've got these roof racks. Come around to the back. Actually, before we get to the back, have a look at these sailplanes you get on the X-Terrain. Kind of gives it a bit of a meaty look. 4x4 four four sticker on the side, and then come around to the rear. I really like this design because they've got LED taillights built into it. A little bit of styling on the tray there. Isuzu D-Max badge down there, and then this embossed X-Terrain badge. Now, here's some interesting stuff. You've got the camera built into here. You drop the tray by pulling that. The X-Terrain comes standard with this roller cover, so this comes with a key that you can lock and unlock. To open it, you just push that down. That slides out of the way and it reveals a cargo space that measures just over 1500 mil of load length, a little over 1500 mil of load width, and then 1122 millimeters of width between the wheel arches. So it's a nice usable space, but you'll notice there are no power outlets here like you do find in some other utes. You do have these hooks on the side and I love this little system here. These pipes take some of the moisture and liquid that you get built up in this sailplane and then the the tray here for that roller cover and then takes them away so you're not going to get water sitting there stagnant. It is a little disappointing that the tray doesn't actually come with a spring load like the Ford Ranger does so it can be quite heavy to lift but tradies are big and tough so that's not a problem. A couple of cup holders there as well and then you've got this handy addition here when it comes to closing this. Let's give that a pull. Locks into place. Down here, three and a half ton towing capacity with 350 kilograms of down ball weight. Overall, yeah, I like it. This would look nice on a work site. So we're inside the Isuzu D-Max. Let's start with the keys. This is what it looks like. On the front there, you have a special button. I'll explain that in a sec. Lock, unlock, and then a blank. On the other side, you have Isuzu. It's a proximity sensing key, so you just leave it in your pocket. Unlock as you approach the car, and then you just hit that start button. Now, this top one is for a remote start feature. So if it's stinking hot outside or freezing cold, you can start the car when you're not inside it, and it will either warm the car or cool it down. So I like that tech. Now, let's talk about styling. I really like what they've done here. So they've taken the game forward because they've realized that dual cab utilities like this are used for work and also for family purposes. So if you have this, you're likely to be using it for both. And that's why they've gone with all this soft touch material around the place. This kind of gives it that extra premium feel. And when you're spending this kind of money, 
you feel like you're actually getting value for it. All of these surfaces are soft. You've got that fake stitching there. But what about your main touch point? So this is nice and soft. And on the door, you have padding on the actual door, but also nicely padded on your armrest. So if you're going to be doing a lot of driving, that feels nice. And the steering wheel feels really nice in the hand as well. I've also tested the surfaces with our durometer. If you want to see how this car compares to other cars, just check out the link in the description below. Now, what about build quality? Well, for the most part, it feels pretty good. I did my standard flex test. There's a bit of flex in that. Same with this center console. It sort of moves around a bit. But outside of that, everything feels really nice and solid. And I think for a dual cab utility like this, it all needs to be nice and sturdy. Let's talk infotainment. So this is the centerpiece to Isuzu's interior. It's a night inch infotainment system. Now we have already done a detailed review of this. So if you want to see it in a whole lot more detail, click on the link up here. Otherwise today I'm just going to take you through a brief overview. So very high resolution screen looks nice there. That is your home screen. Audio is off at the moment, but you get AM, FM, DAB plus digital radio plus Bluetooth audio streaming. It has inbuilt satellite navigation. Now this works fairly well. It can be a little bit laggy at times, but aside from that, it works pretty decently. But the bit that has me most excited is the other inbuilt feature here, which is smartphone mirroring. But this is the only ute in the segment that does wireless smartphone mirroring. So if I jump into here, I'll show you what Apple CarPlay looks like. It takes up the entire screen. Nice and quick as well, transitions between those displays with relative ease. Back here on the home screen, you can configure these to show different things. So you can see here you've got a compass, a date and time as well. It's a pretty basic infotainment system, but it does the job. And I think most people are going to be using this with smartphone mirroring. The thing I also like about it is that it comes with voice commands for the inbuilt system, but you can use this for smartphone mirroring as well. So you can send text messages, call people and do whatever else you need without taking your eyes off the road. Finally, there's an eight speaker sound system with live surround sound, whatever that means. Let's talk safety tech, and there's a fair bit here to get through. So you have autonomous emergency braking with cyclist and pedestrian detection. There's also a turn assist function. So using a camera that faces forward, if you're at an intersection and about to go and there's a car coming, it's going to stop you and prevent you from hitting the car. So that is some really cool technology. You've got radar, cruise control, miss, acceleration, prevention. I think I've said that right. That basically stops you from accelerating if you have a wall in front of you. You know, if you have a brain fade and you put it into drive instead of reverse, that is the tech that will stop you from hitting the wall. You've got driver attention assist, rear cross traffic alert, and an auto high beam. It's not a matrix LED setup. It is just either on or off. Traffic sign recognition and a really interesting new feature that in 2020, you need to get five stars in a safety rating, which this car has. It is a center airbag. So you have your full suite of standard airbags, but there's an airbag between these seats and the whole concept is that if you are in a side impact, it prevents heads from hitting each other as the car moves around. So that inflates down the center here. And this is currently the only ute in the segment that has that technology. And finally, a reverse view camera. Let's have a look at what that looks like. Look, it's a pretty decent setup. It's not a 360 camera, but you get your guidelines and the quality seems to be pretty good as well. Okay, let's talk practicality and we'll start down here with dual zone climate controls. I love these switches too. They're really nice to touch and it just looks like a quite a high-end installation there with that LCD display. USB port, auxiliary outlet, 12 volt as well. And then let's have a look at storage. So, phone. It'll sit down the front there. No wireless phone charging, but there are plenty of spaces to put your phone, which is good. In terms of bottle storage, one at the front there, one at the back for slightly bigger bottles. And then also door storage. Center console, that's pretty decent. I'll show you how deep that is. You can fit almost an entire bottle. Glove box, see, there you go. With the manual in there, you literally can't fit anything else, which is a bit disappointing. But directly above that, you have this little hidey hole. Let me see if that's got an air conditioning outlet. No, it doesn't, but it will easily fit the bottle. And Isuzu has been listening. Check this out, up the top, watch this. It opens normally. The old one, it was almost impossible to open that lid. You needed to push it and pull it at the same time, whereas that just works well. You can put a wallet and other bits and pieces in there. There's also a sunglasses holder. And then just near the driver's knee, you have another little storage nook. I do like the fact that you can put bottles in front of the air vents. And that means you can have cooling or heating if you've got a coffee in there. Really is quite a practical interior. Let's cap it off with comfort and I love the look of these seats. They are big, they've got big side bolsters and they look cool with the perforations. Most importantly, they are extremely comfortable. 
It just feels really nice and it hugs you in and just makes you want to go for a drive. The driver's seat is electrically adjustable, but the passenger's seat is manually adjustable. The steering wheel has reach and tilt adjustment, which is new. You were never able to get that reach adjustment. And then in terms of the controls, everything's super easy to access and all within easy reach. Before I show you the back seat, let's have a look at some practicality. So, you can move this out of the way. You have storage under floor as well. But the cool thing is you can lock this in. So if you clip that into there, that means you have a fairly flat floor to load things in if you don't want to get your seats dirty. And then this seat goes up as well and you have storage under there too. So you can hide valuables and other odds and ends in position. Now, if you do want to have kids in the second row, you have ISOFIX on the two outboard seats, but you also have two top tether points. So give this a pull and they get revealed over here. They slide through here and attach to that common center point. You can see the jack in there. Let me jump in. Uh, grab handles. Okay, let's talk leg room. I actually have a pretty decent amount of knee room there. Toe room isn't fantastic, but outside of that, I feel really comfortable. Good visibility out the windows too, and decent amount of headroom as well. There's a center armrest here, two cup holders. Fits our bottle in nicely, and then you have bottle storage inside the door as well. Only storage room for a bottle. There's no other sort of room either side there. Air vents in the second row, plus a USB outlet. Not sure what this is, maybe a coin pouch or spot for your durries. Four kilogram hook, mat pockets, and a really comfortable place to be seated. So we've hit the road in the D-Max. Powering the all new D-Max is a three litre turbocharged four cylinder diesel engine. Makes 140 kilowatts of power and 450 newton meters of torque. Now it is worth keeping in mind that this is a new engine, but it has similar characteristics to the outgoing D-Max, and that's a good thing because this car is known for its reliability, and hopefully they've been able to retain that in this brand new platform. It is a little bit down on some of its competitors in this segment though. Cars like the Ford Ranger, the new Toyota Hilux, are all pumping out 500 Newton meters of torque now. So 450 is a little bit down, but not a huge amount. It's all made into a six-speed automatic transmission here in the X-Train. You can't get a manual, but on other variants of the D-Max, you can get a six-speed manual transmission. Now, what does all that feel like? Well, let me give it a punch here. It's actually pretty impressive. If you punch it off the line, it gets a little bit of wheel spin, so it has all that torque down low, and that means that you can rely on it to pick up and go even while you are moving. It'll be interesting to see what this is like when we do a bit of towing with it, because I think that'll be the ultimate letdown of having a little bit less torque. But when you're out on the road here, it deals with it. Well, the gearbox is also really good. It's sort of ready to rifle back through the gears when required, but it's not fussy and it's not slow, which is important. Yeah, it's actually pretty impressive. In front of the driver, you have a 4.2 inch display that shows you your trip computer, some four wheel drive information, along with the car's safety systems. Now, there's no official 0 to 100 number, but I want to show you what it looks like, so here it is. Official fuel economy comes in at 8 litres per 100 kilometres. We're currently sitting on 9, so it's pretty close to that official claim with a mix of city, highway and country driving. Now, before I fill you in on the ride, let me run you through some of the features here. So radar cruise control works pretty well. It has a semi-autonomous steering function, so it kind of steers the car in its lane as it goes around mild corners. That also comes with a lane keeping assistant. Look, it works okay. It just sometimes comes out of its lane when you're expecting it not to. So I think there's probably a little bit of refinement still yet to be done there. In terms of the ride, I think this is probably the part they've worked on the hardest. So it retains that leaf spring rear suspension setup, but they've completely smoothed it out. And I'd argue that it is probably one of the best riding utes in this segment now. It soaks up bumps beautifully. And in and around town, it really doesn't feel like you're driving a dual cab ute which is often the problem with these things. They throw you about everywhere. It's not quite as smooth as something like a Ranger Raptor, but it is really commendable with what they've done here. Let's talk steering fill. This is the other big major change to D-Max. It's gone from a hydraulically assisted steering rack to EPAS, which is an electrically assisted power steering system. It's quite light, probably one of the lightest cars in this segment in terms of the steering. So I'm able to basically flick that wheel around with no effort at all. So that's good because it means parking's easy and that kind of thing, but 
doesn't really have any meat to it like something like um, you know the Ford Ranger does. It makes you feel like you're actually putting in some hard yakka. And in terms of visibility, visibility out the front is great. Rearward visibility is good. Side visibility is excellent. These wing mirrors are huge. You have your blind spot monitor built into that as well. And I just feel quite confident driving the car. It doesn't feel overly big on the road. Right, let's talk about the four-wheel driving specs here in the D-Max. Now, here's a caveat. We're not going to be doing any towing or load hauling today, but I thought we could do just a bit of light off-roading so you can see exactly how the D-Max works. So let's talk about the four-wheel drive specs. 30.5 degree approach angle, so that's the angle of the face you can attack before you hit anything, and a 24.2 degree departure angle, 240 millimetres of ground clearance, and 800 millimetres of waiting depth. So that's up there with the best in the segment. So this is our first obstacle. So we're in too high at the moment. We also have four wheel drive high range, four wheel drive low range. We're going to test all of these out. Plus finally a rear differential locker standard and a hill descent control. So first up, let's go to four low. I'll also engage the rear differential lock. Okay, and that is ready to go. So you can see there the display changes with each of the four wheel drive modes we use. Come up to our logs here, just approach slowly. This all feels pretty straightforward, like you probably don't need four low for this, four high is going to be sufficient, but I feel like I have complete control here. The revs are nice and low, but I have plenty of torque, which means it's getting me up here without any dramas and lots of feel through the steering. It's not kicking or bucking or doing anything too weird. So that is impressive. What we'll do now is switch this to four high. So I'll just give that lever a flick. Okay, we are in four wheel drive high range now. So we're going to test out the ground clearance now, and that is by virtue of these rocks that we have here. So the underbody protection on this car is pretty brutal, and it's going to protect us when it comes time to climb over some of these sharper rocks, which can hit the underbody. I can hear one just there. It's not too big of a deal, but if you drop the car onto them, you can do some serious damage. This is crawling over them nicely. The brake pedal's nice and responsive too. I find with the Prado, for example, it's just too sensitive and you find that you keep lurching backwards and forwards, whereas this is pretty good. I've also got a hill descent control, so I'll engage that now by pushing and holding this and just let go of the brake. So it's taking care of all the downhill stuff for me now too. So that is pretty impressive, all carefree. There's no drive modes outside of your four-wheel drive modes to pick from, but it does everything you need it to do. Okay, so let's have a look at waiting depth. I've got a little riverbed here that we can drive down. We'll see how it copes with a little bit of water. So 800 millimetres, the good thing about that is you're not going to flood the car all that easily. If you are serious about four-wheel driving, you'll probably need a snorkel, but 800 millimetres is more than enough, even for this sort of little river crossing here. It just gives you that knowledge that you're not going to damage anything as you drive along. It's fairly effortless here as well. I'm a big fan of this ute. Isuzu has done such a good job fixing all of the issues we had with the last generation. Will the engine stand the test of time though? Because reliability is what Isuzu's are all about. So if this still has the reliability, I really can't see any reason you'd be buying something else over this. If the pricing is a little bit scary, don't worry too much. In Australia, at the very least, they do drive away pricing that is significantly cheaper. So you can actually pick this up for a decent price. So look, big fan of it. I'm keen to see how it stacks up against the competitors. So we're looking forward to doing some back-to-back -back testing. But in the interim, let me know in the comments below, what do you think about this? Do you think they've done enough? Is anything missing? What is stopping you from test driving one? Let me know what your thoughts are. And if you haven't done so already, I'd love it if you could hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. Share it with your friends, hit subscribe, and also the bell icon, because that's going to tell you every single time we publish a new car review. But until next time, take it easy.